my name is Dr. Ben Ng and I work in Mount Elizabeth Novena. My clinic is called Arden Endocrinology Specialist Clinic. Well, I think it's important to realize there are two kinds of fat. First, there's peripheral fat and visceral fat. Peripheral fat is the fat, or subcutaneous fat is the fat that doesn't look nice. It hangs around from your skin. It doesn't look pretty, but the important thing to note is that it doesn't cause health problems. Visceral fat is all that fat in your intestine and around your liver. And that is the one that's associated with heart disease, diabetes, and it's a huge problem because it really affects metabolic function. Can we lose uh, visceral fat? That is the main purpose of Therapy. When we have many of our patients, we talked about insulin resistance or inability to respond to that. A lot of that has to do with visceral fat. If we remove visceral fat, we actually improve metabolic parameters. So when we start obese patients, you need to lose weight. We're actually telling them you need to lose visceral fat. The answer is no, and also the important question is why do you want to do that? There's no point, you know, I think that uh, when we look at endocrinology, we don't, we are, we are not here to, I'm not here to, I tell all my patients, I'm not here to make you look pretty. I'm here to make you healthy. So ultimately, I think the important question when you talk about reducing visceral fat, if you have too much, please bring it to normal. Uh, and visceral fat is important because it provides some form of energy. You know, so you do need some visceral fat, but however too much of it is the problem. So if you have diabetes, you have heart disease and all, reduction in visceral fat is important. And depending on how much you have, reduction of a certain amount is going to come out with health outcomes. And when you improve that, that should be good enough. There are many multiple ways. One, the gold standard is using an MRI, but if you don't have it, certain body composition analysis can do that for you. And if you want to measure liver fat, there's some things called transient elastography, which is a simple ultrasound which can measure that quite accurately for you. I think it's good enough for day-to-day -day usage but I think if you're trying to use that to for medical reasons that's clearly not going to be as accurate as you want but it's good to, I, I can't I don't speak for any company but I think it's not going to say you have high visceral fat and you have no visceral fat you know if it's high it's going to be it's going to be on a high side and something needs to be done Generally speaking, weight reduction, when you start to lose weight, you will lose a combination of both subcutaneous and visceral fat. There are some treatments which we believe that may target it a little bit more. But more importantly, I think that generally speaking, if you start to lose weight, and more importantly, when you lose good weight, as in you lose fat mass, you will tend to lose visceral fat as well. The big problem is that when you lose weight, make sure that you're not losing muscle mass. So far, data seems to suggest that using high-intensity interval training tends to target visceral fat a little bit more. However, it's very important to speak to your doctor in greater detail first. Look at your body composition analysis, look at your indirect colorimetry to make sure that's a suitable exercise for you. But ultimately, yes, high-intensity interval training seems to target it a bit better. The liver is the factory or the battery of the body. So at the end of the day, most whenever we consume any kinds of food, all the nutrients and all that are sent to the liver for storage and processing first. So in simple terms, what happens is that when we tend to consume a bit too much food, when you tend to overeat and all that, the liver is the first organ to start to get affected because that's when all the food is stored there and therefore we call that fatty liver where fat literally deposits in the liver. The problem with fatty liver comes in several situ issues. One, directly on the liver itself, if there's too much fat accumulating, it can cause an inflammatory response. And so it's a condition where we call, it can lead to a liver disease called cirrhosis, where the liver starts to harden and it puts, uh, generally starts to fail over time. In fact, fatty liver and um, uh, cirrhosis due to fatty liver is one of the most common causes of liver failure in ladies. So it's very important that we deal with that because on a metabolic scale as well, fatty liver leads to other problems such as diabetes, heart disease, cancers and strokes.
in medical terms, we call uh, fatty liver non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The non-alcoholic means it's not related to alcohol itself. Yes, drinking alcohol can cause alcoholic liver disease and that's very important and needs to be addressed and you do need to moderate your alcohol consumption. But more importantly, you can get fatty liver by not drinking alcohol at well at all and a lot of it's dependent on the amount of sugar intake the amount of fat and the amount of insulin that you you take that also can cause fatty liver disease I think it's important to realize that a liver function test can miss a lot of people. So don't think that a blood test alone is going to um, is going to rule out fatty liver, but it can be helpful. An ultrasound is useful to rule out fatty liver as well, but it's not the most accurate, especially of uh, fatty liver in the early stages. What we have is transient elastography, and there's a simple scan you can do just by the bedside, which is a lot more accurate in picking up early stages of fatty liver. There's nothing licensed, but what we do is a lot of the anti-obesity drugs and anti-diabetic drugs, they do have a side effect profile of reducing fatty liver.